My name is Mark Whitlock, and I'm the CEO of Central Educational Center, and we welcome you here today to talk with friends who are going to help us remember some of the key points in the history of Central Educational Center. Let me introduce Cynthia Jenkins, a member of the original steering committee and the mayor pro tem of the city of Noonan. Dr. Lucy Hayden is a member of the original ste steering committee and a field consultant for Advanced Ed. Janie Lohr is the former director of high school programs here at CEC, and she's currently director of Bruton Parker programs in Coweta County. Andy Perriam is a former director of high school programs. He focused on career technical education programming when he was here at CEC. We welcome these friends, and we're going to talk with you about the idea that Central Educational Center has a history that continues to morph and change. So let's start off with questions about the original steering committee. Um, Cynthia, Lucy, can you talk about how you were able to bring everybody to the table? I think that was one of the key elements of the steering committee. Mm -hmm. Cynthia? Okay, well I came in a little bit later than most on this one. Um, I was chosen to be on the steering committee as a neighborhood representative. I actually live right next door right. and have from the very beginning of the school. Um, I had just graduated from Georgia Tech and moved in and my aunt, Hazel Kennedy, had been um, someone that the, the steering committee had originally been talking to. And she passed away in 97. When I moved in in 98, I was asked to take her place. Okay. And you worked closely with Dr. Harless. I did. Yeah. I yeah. did. Um, as a matter of fact, I ended up on the Buildings and Grounds Subcommittee because <laughs> my degree from tech is in architecture. Yeah. So, um, and uh, so I helped with some of the placement of the building and um, some of the, the aesthetic things that were going to happen, um, including many, many renditions of what the new additions should look like. Great, great. And of course, as we talk together today, we're going to make a lot of reference to our friend, Dr. Joe mm -hmm. Harless, mm -hmm. who chaired that steering committee. We're going to talk about Joe and his work. Lucy, you were part of that original steering committee. How did you get everybody to the table? Well, as curriculum director from the school system at that time, we had been working uh, with Janie and, and others on uh, changing the paradigm of vocational education using tech prep, using apprenticeships, trying to build those programs. Simultaneously, we were getting lots of very negative feedback from our employers in the community. Things such as the graduates are not meeting the needs that we have in manufacturing and in other skilled areas. And we began to talk among ourselves and with the superintendent, Richard Brooks, and the board about the need to do something different uh, to, to change this paradigm simultaneously, or as some have said, the stars aligned I think that was a phrase Joe used. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Harless stepped forward and said to Mr. <clears throat> Brooks, you know, I have a little ex uh, expertise in working with uh, these kinds of problems and, and an analysis of various programs. And uh, why don't we get a group of people together to begin to talk about what is happening, what our big goals, our macro goals are, what is it that we want to happen with our high school students. And because of Joe, uh, who was such a great mentor to all of us, such a great collaborator, and a person who worked a great deal behind the scenes in the community, he began to pull together this group of people, and we had numerous dialogues and I mean long, intense dialogues and brought a lot of different players to the table. And these, uh, these dialogues led to the formation of, of our game plan. Yeah, yeah. Janie, when that game plan was being formed, um, there was a lot of work to be done inside the school system in terms of a structure that could allow something like Central Educational Center to work. Um, you were at the forefront of creating a different type of work-based learning. 
and you were helping to create this notion of a longer period of time, a block sort of scheduling. Could you talk about how those were innovations that helped to allow CEC to start? I, I was um, named director for the apprenticeship program in 1995, and I think we, we changed that paradigm from early release to really meaningful work in the afternoon with, with students and connecting that with a post-secondary component that would allow students to have a higher level skill once they graduated from high school. So all of, all of that, uh, being, being at a higher level skill, I think was what the, the goal was and, and to make sure that students had that post-secondary component and that was very different from the old old the early just early release program where students went to work but it was connected to a career goal and started with job shadowing and internships and really researching jobs so that when students made that commitment they were on a, a path once they graduated from high school so you changed the work based learning experience to something that had a structure to it absolutely had more purpose to it was uh, more directed, more supervised, and created greater collaboration between education and the business community. And the, and the mentor at the work sites helped us develop, just as you would have objectives in your classroom, objectives on the job so that you had specific things that you wanted students to learn on the job. So it was a marrying of here's the part that you do in high school, here's the part you do on the job. And once the student graduated to, and we changed that when we came to CEC, that they could get the post-secondary learning while they were still in high school. And that's, well, that was a huge change for us. But to start earlier with the post-secondary component so that they're highly skilled once they graduate. Yeah, yeah. Andy, in your background, I mean, you taught psychology, you taught electronics. Um, you were a huge proponent in this school system of a different kind of career technical education. Um, what kind of skepticism did you have that we could pull that <laughs> off? Well, Jan going back to Janie, working with Janie in the 90s to try to bring about this, this change in, in education, at least in the technical career area, uh, a lot of times we, uh, at least I did, almost give up and resign ourselves to same old, same old, but we, I guess, had hope and kept pushing forward. And when, when Dr. Harless came along, it was like his seamless, his seamless education uh, just kind of got right where we had been trying to resolve some serious problems. One of the biggest frustrations as a career tech educator in the 90s was seeing my senior students, mostly males, sitting around their senior year with nothing to do except take a required English, senior English class. And they had to fill up the rest of their day with whatever they thought would be the least uh, stressful or strenuous course. And, uh, I, I got to where I was asking all of these students, uh, what are your plans for next year? And most of them would say, well, I'm going to college. And I had one particular student, Toby, who happened to end up at CEC. I asked him what he was going to do. I think he was maybe a sophomore at the time. And uh, he said he was going to Georgia Tech. And my, my follow-up question to all of this was, why? because I like for students to start thinking about career type stuff. Why are you doing that? His answer was, after thinking for quite a while, was, well, my daddy wants me to go to tech. I said, okay, that's a good, good reason, huh? Yeah, so uh, as we began to talk, Toby began to say, well, I want to be an engineer, I think. And uh, I said, you know, we're talking about this new school where we're going to have pre-engineering and some other stuff, maybe you need to go over there and see if you really want to be an engineer before you get to Georgia Tech. So I think our biggest, my biggest concern about education was the seamlessness and how to fix that. And uh, I think CEC has done that wonderfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you were quoted in a, in a video, Andy, as 
one time as, uh, as saying, you know, we, we took the college and we brought the college in-house. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We in had, at the, well, early on in the 90s, this was before CEC was actually uh, a reality uh, when we're still talking about it. A couple of proposals came down the line. One was that uh, we needed to partner with the technical college, mm -hmm. and I hate, to, I hate to say this, I guess, but it's history now and it's all been fixed. But uh, Carroll Tech at the time, mm -hmm. which is now West, West, West Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Tech. Yeah. we approached them about that and there, as an electronics teacher, over the years they would tell me, well, Andy, you're doing a good job, but we don't need you to teach electronics as much as we need for you to teach uh, job skills. If we get, if you can send us students that'll be on time, be there every day, have a good attitude, we'll teach them the electronics. Mm -hmm. So if I had students that wanted to study electronics and get a job, what they were looking at was a big barrier, a big wall. And that's part of what we wanted to, to fix. And uh, when we sort of talked to West, to Carroll Tech about this, they were reluctant for for whatever reason, territorial or concerns about, well, maybe is that the way it should be? They were kind of balking, but we had a another technical college south of us mm -hmm. in LaGrange that was, they were very interested in it, but, mm -hmm. but we're not in their area. Mm -hmm. But being uh, charter like we were talking about being, we could partner with anybody we wanted to. And I think fortunately once, once the Curl Tech folks realized that this was serious and this was probably going to happen, they wanted to be involved, which was great. Let and me just add one of the, yeah. the things that we heard a great deal from um, the business community. Our original group on the steering committee was this issue of the soft skill mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. that Joe would describe as being right. on time. Uh, you know, looking presentable, so forth and so on. And we knew going into uh, forming this that we must, must build that into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And because it was Joe, we needed to build it in as an accomplishment and a performance right. that right. had to occur here. Right. Yeah. Let, let's wrap up our segment uh, with just briefly, if you would, talk about um, what What's been an outgrowth of CEC that you're working on? Okay. Um, a clear outgrowth of this, Joe had always talked about seamless education, um, and he meant from <coughs> cradle to the grave, mm -hmm. not just, you know, K through 12 or um, post-secondary. And one of the things that he and I discussed numerous mm -hmm. times, and I was so encouraged by him, mm -hmm. is getting the community involved. Um, and providing opportunities for education. One of the things that recently happened that I've been working on since talking with him was getting the Howard Warner Community Center on board. Mm -hmm. And that was something that um, I think he would be extremely proud of because that was something that he and I spent a lot of time talking about. Um, hopefully some of the things that we talked about we'll be able to implement in that building to affect yeah. this community and get people from this community to attend here. A multi-million dollar project that yep. um, couldn't have been pulled off if you mm -hmm. guys hadn't done that kind of planning. Mm, that's right. No doubt, no doubt. Lucy, what have been some of the outgrowths of CEC? Well, certainly um, uh, the, the development of um, the, an articulation between the, these college, uh, state colleges and the technical colleges that has resulted in a certification process now where uh, mm -hmm. our college and career academies uh, and dual enrollment, all those kinds of things are now also duly certified by the Technical uh, College <coughs> Commission of Georgia. Yeah. And, um, I sometimes think Joe is up there smiling down at us because this school and one other really were the pilots of um, figuring out how to do this joint evaluation of the technical college aspects, the state requirements, the charter requirements, and the SACS accreditation requirements. To make it seamless. 
to make it seamless and uh, now it's rolling down also with this eighth grade academy which is adding another excellent component so to me that's one of the greatest outcomes of, of this process. So it continues to grow, it's a now statewide initiative so it's it, been replicated it is multiple times. growing and yeah. it's becoming the norm in the state yeah. of Georgia yeah. especially to receive funding. Yeah, there you go, there you yeah. go. Janie, what's been an outgrowth of CEC? I think when I look back at um, helping students plan for their future and we started that with the career planning guide and now that has, has grown so that elementary students are now studying careers, they're more aware of a career, they're more aware of the soft skills that's incorporated, but I think continuing to help students to plan and to be good planners and to take advantage of, everything, of all the opportunities that are here. Um, and I think that word seamless is, is so captures what we want to do because how do you take all those things that are available to the students and help them tailor it so that it's tailored for them. To and build that plan. To build skill. that plan, to yeah. build that plan, but also yeah. to help to give them education about their different paths that they can take and the opportunities that are there because I think so many students never really understood what's available to them and I think now they're able to plan better because they know what the opportunities are for them. Great, great. Andy, what's been an outgrowth of CEC? Well, probably two, two quick items. One would be curriculum design. Uh, learning being validated by Dr. Harless that curriculum has to be designed backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a, a, what is the purpose of education, mm -hmm. public education. And once, you, once you figure out what it is, then you go to the, to the end result, to the workplace, mm -hmm. and you find out specifically what it is they need, what does a career require, and then you design from there backwards instead of traditionally uh, designing forward so that was a big thing uh, another is the is the the barrier between academic and vocational education uh, has broken down and it just tickles me that it has because that used to be one of my pet peeves uh, when I was preparing for a, a talk one time I researched the definition of, of academic and vocational and academic as an adjective is defined as that for which there is no practical application. And that always bugged me. Why are we teaching academic subjects if that's all they're for, it's just no practical application? And part of our goal was to, was to break down that barrier between academic and vocational. As a matter of fact, there was a little bit of talk early on of just creating a vocational center. Correct. And I was like, I'm out of here. I don't want anything to do with that because I've seen too many of those fail. Mm -hmm. Because when you leave the academic classes at the base high schools, uh, what you're doing is you're saying, that's different, that's not important. But as a career educator, I know that that is a core, those academic courses are core subjects, they're core. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I think, is, is a legacy. That level of seamlessness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And would you define vocational for us? Because I remember you looked that one up in the dictionary. Yeah, that's close to my heart because what, what a vocation is, is, is defined as one's calling in life. Yeah. It's almost a religious experience. You know, it's what you're called to do with your life. And we all have, we all have a life that we've got to figure out something to do with. And, and if you follow your heart, you know that that's what you want to do with your life. It's a great way to end this segment talking about the history of Central Educational Center. There's more to come, and we want to thank Mayor Pro Tem Cynthia Jenkins, Dr. Lucy Hayden, Janie Lohr, and Andy Perriam for their contributions. Thanks. Mark Whitlock, welcome back to the Central Educational Center, and we're talking with more friends about 
the history of Central Educational Center and more recent history at that. It's a pleasure to welcome to the set Dr. Amitabh Sharma, who is the chair of the America India Foundation, the Atlanta chapter, Candace Boothby, who is president and CEO of the Noonan Coweta Chamber of Commerce, Martin Plyer, who's the COO of Grinzebach Corporation and the chair of the board of Central Educational Center, and Jan Alleygood, who has her own business, who manages the Noonan Country Club and is a former chair of the CEC Board of Directors. Friends, welcome. Let's, let's talk about uh, CEC more recently, and let's talk about some broader impacts. I'm going to start with Dr. Sharma. Um, Amitabh, we met a while back, and you have been on multiple occasions to CEC. You've taken great interest in studying this model. You've brought friends uh, in the business world from the Middle East and India. You've brought the Consul General of India to visit CEC. Why all the interest in this particular school and this model? Uh, Mark, uh, in our previous segment, Andy mentioned about uh, the definition of vocation, yeah. and uh, he referred to the calling. So two years ago, I had this epiphany, and the calling was to take what is important from here to India. And uh, bringing in the mandate of the current Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister Modi, we have 65% of our population 35 years of age. They are good in education, but they have no livelihood. And what CEC provides is a wonderful framework, tried and tested, replicated several times, which we can take to India and implement right at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. And what it will do, it will have serious ramifications, for example, in the rural sector, where the industrialists or the small business people are devoid of the right skills that they require there. Thereby, what we'll do, we'll do a threefold impact. The first impact will be we will create employment for those people. The second will be that we will give a fillip to the local economy. And the third, most important, we will arrest or contain the migration from the rural to the urban sector because the metropolitan towns are already bursting at the seams. Lack of water, lack of infrastructure, lack of transportation, so have you. So well, this is a wonderful model, and I felt that this will be absolutely wonderful for me to be able to position this in India very effectively. Mm -hmm. Candace Boothby, you're on point to make sure that um, communities' assets are developed so that we can ensure economic prosperity in our community. What does CEC mean to that effort? <clears throat> well, as you know, the mission of the Chamber is to champion economic prosperity. And the model for CEC aligns perfectly with our mission. And the role the Chamber plays in the community in creating prosperity is creating the product. We have a fabulous development authority and they sell our community very effectively, but without the right product they wouldn't be as effective. And so our role as a chamber is to work collaboratively with the school system, with the technical college, and with the business community to help ensure that we have the right workforce and that we have the right systems in place to support that. You know that we are the National Chamber of the Year, the only chamber, thank you, yes, the only chamber in Georgia to ever receive that distinction. And the other thing that I think that the chamber helps with CEC and vice versa is our country is looking for great models on how to do what we've done here in Coweta County with the seamlessness that we've created and the focus that we have on the soft skills and the outputs and the outcomes. And um, I think that we are able to do that because we're better positioned as the National Chamber of the Year. And, and um, we do all work well together and we all value the same things. And as a result, we're seeing the results. Yeah, yeah. Were, was CEC a part of that National Chamber of the Year? Yes, um, yes. Effort. <clears throat> Absolutely. When we went through the very rigorous process, which had many layers and many steps to it, when we got to the part where we started defining some of the value added to the community, we used CEC as our model for how to do that. And we won National Chamber of the Year based on our partnership with CEC and based on what we were doing in healthcare. Because, you know, we have a community wide branding campaign, Prosperity's Front Door, and one of those pillars is healthcare and one is education. And between those two, we were able to tell a story and show results and show alignment 
between those and with our mission in the community um, that allowed us to win that award. Very good, very good. Martin Plyer, um, you represent the Chamber of Commerce because they help to govern CEC by selecting business leaders to be a part of our board. And you represent the chamber on the CEC board. You chair the CEC board. Um, you've been part of a business, a company, that's been very aggressive about helping CEC take the next step in innovation. What is it that you saw in CEC? Why, why the interest? Well, <clears throat> the interest came about four years ago when uh, we realized we have an issue with our workforce. And obviously it's not just Grenzebach that has this issue. <clears throat> All the, a lot of other manufacturing companies here in the county, we found out have the same issue. We have an aging workforce. At the moment, the average age in my shop is 47 years and an average tenure of 15 years. So you can see in a couple of years, I have a lot of talented people retiring. And after we replenish that uh, to be competitive in the worldwide market that we are in as a company. Um, so we were looking on how to do that. And uh, of course, CEC came into that picture because we were replicating something that uh, we were used from our German headquarters, um, like a vocational school. And that is actually the key to develop the workforce. Uh, we have experience with that in Germany since we started Grenzebach in 1960. We have uh, an apprenticeship program there. So we said, hey, we want to do the same thing here in the US. And uh, how to do that? The vehicle would be the CEC, because you have all these wonderful programs. Actually, we're sitting in one of them. Uh, the video, audio video program is, is one where you can really uh, learn a profession while you're at high school. And um, we worked with the CEC, again, we started four years ago to bring the first interns slash apprentices. We, uh, intentionally called them apprentices because that was the ultimate goal to replicate what we know what is working in Germany an apprenticeship program to the US and um, we started uh, with two really talented uh, young uh, people here from CEC in our engineering department they meanwhile graduated and went on to college um, about two years ago uh, we figured let's uh, close it down more to the shop area and uh, we found a really talented person that started the internship program here at Grenzebach in our welding department. And um, that worked out so well um, that we hired him right after his high school graduation. And uh, that more or less showed us how valuable CEC is. And that's why we pushed so hard to get uh, the German apprenticeship program set up and actually um, with all this pre-work, with all the help from the CEC and state legislators and everybody involved, in it, that includes the chamber, it uh, includes uh, West Georgia Technical College, the technical college system of Georgia, the lieutenant governor, uh, and other businesses in Coeda, we were able to, to set this up. And I'm really excited that we will start with a group of uh, students from the CEC this year, uh, a real German apprenticeship program where you start your career, because I want to see it as a career and not as a, a, a project in your you know, school life. Yeah. Uh, you start your career when you're 15, 16 years old, more or less when you're a rising sophomore. That's when we want to have you 10th, 11th, and th uh, 12th grade. These three years are the apprenticeship years. Great. Martin, uh, we will have the, according to the German Chamber, the first high school German apprenticeship system in America. Yeah, we will be the first in the nation, and I think we can be really proud that we could make this happen in this community because it's the whole community, but the CEC is the catalyst. Without the CEC, it would never be possible. Jan Alligood, you chaired the CEC board. You now sit as a member of the Coweta County Development Authority, so you're on point for selling those assets that Candace and the Chamber and, and Martin and others keep in shape and keep in good condition. What's, you were part of Georgia Power, a huge economic development engine for this state. What's CEC, what, why the interest? CEC is our secret weapon in Coweta County because we can produce the workforce that new companies and existing companies need. Mm -hmm. My tenure with Georgia Power, 49 years, we continued, even though we provided the same product, electricity, 
we continue to look for new technologies and new ways and how to become more efficient with that. And as our technologies and our delivery systems changed, we needed employees and we needed new employees on board that brought that new um, education that's relevant to what we do now. So from the economic uh, development world, our county is able to say that we can provide you employees, we can provide you that workforce that is on the cutting edge, we, that has the education that's relevant to new technologies and growing technologies and some aspects, we may be a little ahead of the curve here at Central Education, being able to provide that workforce. That is huge in drawing new business to town, new quality, um, high paying jobs to Coweta County, which really just feeds into growing a family oriented, um, welcoming community. Um, we have great uh, amenities that has um, uh, grown up around our community. I think Central Education Center has been a huge catalyst for our booming medical community. Um, it just continues to to grow and if it wasn't for Central Education Center being able to sort of turn on a dime and most education systems can't um, and um, connect with what those new innovative um, technologies in the future are going to be and be able to assure uh, that we'll have that workforce ready for, for those industries. That's huge in bringing new industries to town. Great, great. It's a great way to wrap up this segment talking about the history of Central Educational Center. Stay tuned for another segment. Thanks to Dr. Amitabh Sharma, to Candace Boothby, to Martin Plyer, to Jan Alligood. I'm Mark Whitlock, CEO of Central Educational Center. Welcome back. We're doing some segments about the history of CEC, and I want to welcome to this segment Steve Daniel, President, West Georgia Technical College, and Laura Horton, Programming Production Specialist with New Link. Welcome. Thank welcome. You, Laura. Thank you. Um, Steve, you've listened to other segments, you've been involved with this, you've been a catalyst in the continued development and growth of CEC. What is it that's critical for West Georgia Technical College in its relationship with CEC? How can you use this to benefit West Georgia Tech? Well, I think the key thing is the benefit for our students. Uh, giving an opportunity for a young person in high school to achieve a college credential You've heard the, the stories already about the workforce development piece and the link for the, everything from the skills gap in this country to uh, career development. Uh, so the focus for us really is to create that, that seamless model and really deploy that seamless model that was the original dream and the original foundation for the CEC. And so it's so exciting to be part of that and the partnership's so strong uh, here that it's a pleasure to work with that. It's a pleasure to be part of that and to see those those young people again really get a jump on their uh, their career development and a, and a jump in many cases uh, actually into a career as you've heard from Grinzebach and some of the opportunities that they presented. So it's just really a, a, a unique model that has thankfully been adopted statewide and, and really is a national model to really uh, uh, continue to be a catalyst for that, that seamless model of education. And Steve, you, you as West Georgia Tech's uh, leader have four of these in your region. You've we, got four college and career academies. We do. I, I've had the pleasure in a prior career to actually serve on the board for a, the creation of a college career academy and the steering committee. So coming in, I, I naturally we had benchmarked the CEC from, from other regions of the state and certainly uh, having an opportunity to come and be part of this now has, has been a great uh, asset for me as president to be able to uh, 
uh, use that knowledge, then all that's been gained and all of the, the great things that have been accomplished here uh, as we go forward and, and further develop the, the newer academies that are within our region. Yeah. Well, Horton, you're with New Link and mm -hmm. you're co-located here at Central Educational Center. You've heard in our previous segments that talk about Dr. Harless's focus on seamlessness. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about seamlessness and how it relates to what New Link does with CEC? Yes, um, we co-located about five years ago. It just made more sense to run Channel 7 and Channel 10 right across the hall from the video broadcasting class. Instead of coming and driving in from downtown, um, we needed to be here. We needed to be in the schools, work with the kids. So we work hands on hand with the kids. They do all the camera work for our shows and everything. And myself and Jake are right across the hall. So we can just walk across the hall and get our shows done. If the kids need help on anything, they can come to our office and all of that. Um, and it's a great partnership that we have. Jake and I couldn't do all of the programming without the help of this class here. Um, the students help us on multiple shows that air on Channel 10. Uh, we do shows for Channel 7, for the school channel, um, and it's, it's a great partnership and we really enjoy being here and being inside of the school and seeing and working with these kids every day. So you've multiplied your workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, you've helped young people here get opportunities that typically only uh, uh, someone who's near the end of a college program mm -hmm. and broadcast video would get. Um, Laura, what's it like being among students? You were once a student here. <laughs> You're a professional. What's it like being among students who are your workforce? It, it's a lot of fun. The, uh, the kids definitely keep you on your toes. Um, they're learning new stuff every day. They teach Jake and I stuff all the time. Um, like you said, I was once a student here. Um, I took classes for two years at CEC, and then I graduated 2006 from Neenan High School. And I actually figured out I wanted to go in broadcast journalism because of CEC. Okay. I did not know what I wanted to do. My entire family's in education. I didn't really want to go that route. Um, and I came to CEC, took the Video One class, and I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun. I really like it. So I went to the University of Alabama and majored in it, and then came back here. And my family jokes, well, you're still in education. You work <laughs> in a school. You help the kids. You're teaching them. Um, but it's a great partnership, and Jake and I have a lot of fun with the students. Um, and they help us out, you know, when we have big events in the community that are, it's a four camera shoot, well, Jake and I can't run four cameras because um, usually he's switching it. We have to have students help, so they come out in the community and help us. Last year in the summer, we had four interns. This year, we'll have interns this summer. So it's just, it's, it's great for us because we get more content, mm -hmm. we get better quality content because of the equipment that's been donated, the equipment CEC has bought, New Link has bought, um, and then it just benefits the community. And our labs are seamless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, is, this is your studio, this is CEC studio. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's a working studio. It's one of the nicest studios. Um, you know, I would definitely put our studio up there with other people's studios. When people come and visit the school, they're very impressed with what they see. Um, you know, West Georgia was here a couple years ago, and they are like, your control room's nicer than ours. That's a college. And here's our high school that has a nicer control room. Um, and just everything that the kids can learn in this program is wonderful. They truly are getting the experience because, I mean, their director was in the business. And so that it, the knowledge that he brings to the class, and Mr. Brett teaches Jake and I stuff all the time, too. So we're benefiting from that by being in the school and located here. Steve Daniel, you come from industry to education, and you've been on point to help this state attract and retain Kia, one of the great economic development stories of this new century in Georgia. Steve, what's it like, and what is the value of CEC to getting um, workforce at a younger age that is really ready to go on the job What's the value of that to companies that you've worked with? Well, you, you hear uh, anywhere you go in this state or in this country, uh, the concern for an aging workforce and the concern for the level of automation that you mentioned Kia, the level of automation that's in a plant like that requires such a high level of technical skill that if you don't have something beyond high school at a college level credential, you're not going to perform very well, particularly in the, the technical areas of maintenance or uh, 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 any area that requires some level of skill beyond just an operator. And so having that uh, opportunity to work with someone like CEC or an entity like a career academy 
to bridge that gap and build that really begins at an early age to set those uh, what I consider a wow moment for students. Mm -hmm. uh, and so working with business and industry, we've been able to do that and create that wow moment for them at an earlier point than they might have seen uh, if they had not had the opportunity to experience something hands-on at, at uh, uh, a CEC or, a, again, another career academy. Because if we don't have that experience at a young age, many times they wouldn't get that until they're well beyond high school or maybe had tried a career and, and didn't like it. And, and just the exposure of that is so, so great. And so we've, I've had the privilege to work with some fantastic uh, organizations uh, that have really uh, helped us partner again to bring uh, the industrial side or the business side into the, into the educational environment. And that's, I think, the magic that uh, is so great for the CEC. I want to thank Steve Daniel, President, West Georgia Technical College, and Laura Horton, Programming Production Specialist for New Link. Thanks for being with us on this segment. Hope that you'll spend some time taking a look at the history of Central Educational Center. Thanks. <music>